Okay, um, it's time past two. So, you know, let's get started. So uh, today I will talk to you about a way to expose APIs on top of Apache Cassandra. So the solution is open source and called Stargate. So today would be uh, quite deep dive in the, into the technology just to for you to realize how it was built and uh, what you can expect from it now and in the future. I'm Cédric Lunven, and I'm leading the developer advocacy team at Datastax. So as advocate, we do training, public speaking, application development. We also develop some tools, so we're still coding a lot. Uh, I'm a Java geek and created an open source framework eight years ago, so it's called FF4J, Feature Sleeping for Java. Uh, and I'm doing uh, all kinds of APIs for multiple years already. Uh, so that's the developer advocate team. Uh, it's growing and growing. And so uh, we share the love on Cassandra on a weekly basis on YouTube. OK, so in this uh, presentation, I will uh, go back to what is Stargate, uh, why, why and how. And then we will show all the APIs currently exposed, REST, Document, API, GraphQL API. And then we will discuss all the two links on top of the Stargate platform. And finally, I will open the discussion to uh, list you what will be the new interfaces uh, available in the tool, because it's meant to be open and we, we will keep adding new features in um, the tool. OK, so um, it's all come with the data gateway principle. You would like to have a proxy on top of your database to open a wide set of APIs for the developer not to have to really um, have deep knowledge about the language to use, the transport to use, and uh, stick to what is really know the APIs, especially for front-end and mobile uh, developer. Just also a way to expose Cassandra to a wider range uh, of use cases and uh, users. So let's see. <clears throat> Stargate is just uh, this data gateway working today with multiple distribution of Cassandra and exposing uh, all kind of APIs for the developer. So the, the really the, the purpose is to make easy to use the database from any application workload by any plugin support or API. OK. Um, so it's called Stargate. It's uh, available on stargate.io and also github.com github slash stargate. So you can see it has been created two years ago. As of now, we have about 500 star on GitHub, about 30 contributors, and you can find some commits every single day. On the website, uh, you should have a look. Not only you find all the dots, the getting started, some Docker Compose for you to have it running in a sandbox to see right away what it's doing, uh, but also some blog and forum. Uh, just to you know to keep interacting with the with the committers and developers it's it's really meant to be a community project and you will see later that we are moving even further in that direction so it's a gateway so uh, uh, we'll probably talk about a proxy uh, on top of your database so it will introduce loose coupling into uh, in between your database and the people interacting with your database so we call that for the persistence, the persistence extensions, and for the API, the API extensions. And it's all about modularity. Really, the purpose is how you need to adapt. You want to adapt or expose a new uh, API, boom, create your module. If you want to um, uh, support another form of database, uh, just create a new modules. Now you will see it's really, really focused on Cassandra would be pretty uh, some work to uh, adapt for another um, database, completely different technology. It's possible, uh, but a lot of uh, concept already really focused on the internals of Cassandra. So again, data API, GraphQL document, back to, uh, to SQL, Cassandra query language, it's still available and open. This is not because you put some proxy that um, you don't want to leverage on it to execute some query Cassandra language. We will see how it works uh, and more to come. Now, if I open that, you see that Stargate is an OSGI application. Okay, 
It's Java based on OSGI. The runtime is Apache Felix, and we leverage on a Java framework called Apache uh, Drop Wizard, <laughs> Felix for the runtime uh, Drop Wizard to export the APIs. And there you find again all these uh, REST endpoints, uh, or not REST for the SQL one. Okay, it is exactly the same APIs that I shown to you now put uh, in the product. So the first part <clears throat> was to create an endpoint for the authentication on the top uh, left hand corner to create some token to be able to use the API in an authenticated and authorized way. So each time you perform a call, invoke the endpoint, you will first uh, eat a filter, an, authentic an authentication filter, just to evaluate if your token is still uh, validated or not. And you do have the credentials to use the key space of the table you want to use. Then you need to eat the rate limiting service, avoiding some, uh, uh, you know, too much requests coming your way at the same time, uh, DDoS. All, um, all the calls are recorded. There is a metric service that expose a metrics endpoint, uh, drop wizard metrics. So um, this is the way for the stack like Prometheus to come and pull the component and track everything what's happening there. Then you rely on the persistence services with multiple uh, shims or storage sim for Cassandra 3.11, follow X or um, Datasax Enterprise 6.x. All the services need to be registered in the OSGI registry. This is how it works. The idea was really to be able to hot deploy, hot fix the module here. OSGI is uh, pretty flexible to add and remove mobile <coughs> module at runtime. Um, this OSGI uh, runtime is also uh, used in the uh, enterprise service bus world. Okay, now if I go even further, um, so for the SQL and gRPC service, um, it's pretty simple as of now. For the uh, data and document uh, API, it's the same endpoint, so API slash REST. And you will see that uh, not only you do have the endpoint, but we also provide the tools for you to use the endpoint. So here in REST, it's Swagger UI. On the GraphQL API, um, there are two flavors of GraphQL APIs. One is SQL first, and the second is schema first. I will exactly show what uh, both are doing. But also, you immediately <coughs> you can immediately notice that <coughs> we also provide a tool, and here it's the GraphQL Playground. Okay. <coughs> Go back to the authentication. Um, so you do have an authentication endpoint where you will provide <coughs> your credential and it's leveraging on Cassandra. So Cassandra not only to authenticate, but also the role-based access. And the authentication service I showed you before really, really rely on the security mechanism internal of Cassandra. The token, uh, you, can set, you can set up the TTL of the token. Tokens are shared across the instance of Stargate. So if you authenticate against one uh, Stargate and load balance to another providing the token, as the token are shared in uh, the token stable, you are not, there is no stickiness in between a uh, Stargate and a token. So you can do some load balance uh, pretty easily and it's stateless load balancing. To authenticate, quite easy, just invoke a post uh, to provide user and password. So here I put the defaults. And as an output, you get a token that each time you will uh, send it as a header, and the header name is, is called X Token Cassandra. Quite simple, right? Each Stargate node is referenced as a peer in a dedicated table, and all the Stargate nodes, uh, uh, they can find each other like uh, Cassandra nodes by looking at Stargate local and Stargate peers. Uh, pretty familiar, right? Uh, okay. So I told you that we uh, expose <clears throat> uh, we expose some uh, metrics API 
Um, so those are uh, Grafana dashboard. So first level of the infrastructure, this is the GVM information that you can retrieve. Second layer is at the HTTP traffic level. So here you can see all the calls, but also exactly uh, what where the um, URL invoked and what is uh, uh, error message and <coughs> HTTP code. And you can often, of, of course, go one level higher just to say, hey, which are the APIs and endpoints that are the most successful? Well, I just start, okay, I just start up the, 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 the node here. It's all zero, but you know, that's gave you the, an, an idea of exactly what you can see um, as metrics. So what you used to do to connect to Cassandra node, as you can still do it, of course, uh, in the driver, you provide one or two contact points. That's better in the beginning to <clears throat> do the initial connection. <clears throat> and um, the first response you get from the drivers, we get the list of all the nodes, and then the driver could connect to every single node and we'll open connection just to do the heartbeat and L check. Because as you all know, the tokens, uh, the drivers are token aware pretty clever and uh, can invoke as a coordinator uh, a node that will be a replica for this query. So now with this Stargate in the picture, well, Stargate in the module is a Cassandra node. It's a Cassandra node without data. So you will enable the flag to add bootstrap to say, hey, no, this node won't get any data, won't have any token range. Um, but still, the Stargate node will join the cluster and get all the, the, all the token range and will be part of the gossiping. So when you ask something to Stargate, Stargate uh, does have the intelligence to uh, route your request to the proper nodes for your request to be as fast as possible. So there you find the APIs exposed, REST, Document, GraphQL, SQL. Uh, we recommend to use the SQL interface of the Stargate. Of course, Stargate is not a single point of failure. What you want to do is having multiple Stargate nodes in your infrastructures. So this is uh, what, they, what they are doing at Yelp. And so um, you will have a load balancer in front of your Stargate nodes. As I told you, the, the load balancing is stateless pretty easy to do. Stargate, knows, uh, Stargate node uh, can recognize each other doing the same, um, the same dynamic load balancing if you wish. You can at runtime uh, learn what are the Stargate nodes and um, enslave your load balancer like kind of a service discovery because in the Stargate piece and Stargate local, you, can, you do have this value. Okay. So now look at this picture. We do have a way to split the compute and the data. So we see a couple, couple talks already here to provision the infrastructure based on your workload. You know, we know we can scale a Cassandra cluster very, very, uh, to a very, very large. Uh, you need more capacity, add new node. You need more throughput, add new node. And based on your workload, adapt in a CPU, RAM, and disk. Well, now if you tend to buy new nodes only to increase your throughput, that's some disk you have to pay for not a good, um, uh, not to get the full of your money. So now with Stargate, there is a way only to scale the compute and uh, increase the only the throughput is if this is the use case you need. So that's an opportunity to reduce some cost of uh, you know, data centers where um, the focus in widely on the compute, um, but even mind. So not only it exposes a new way to consume the data, but also it's pretty neat to split compute uh, and storage. Okay, so let's have a look in those APIs. So first, uh, the REST API is, I mean, the first you might think of. So we will expose as much Cassandra, Cassandra query language as we can as REST interfaces. You find the DDL, so you can work with the schema, create a schema, create a table, create some columns, 
indexes UDT and DML. So you can um, add some add some um, so yeah you can add some raw update raw uh, and the same so yes stargate without data that's really uh, using the cassandra join ring force exactly the same uh, as uh, we have seen in the previous apache code yes same concept those apis expose as of today json and only json we got the question as well before um but we will see uh, very soon uh, we will have a gRPC exp uh, endpoint expose, and now it will be serialized protobuf. But as of now, what you see here is um, uh, as you, what you see here is uh, JSON uh, over HTTPS. Of course, not totally uh, clear. Okay, so um, I do have for you uh, a GitHub repo where you can do everything uh, I do in front of you uh, for you to test. Uh, so if you go to uh, GitHub slash dev, so let me put that in the chat for, in the chat for you. Here you see uh, all the prerequisites to have some nodes running. Uh, it's all based on uh, Docker and you will have a uh, few nodes running and uh, Cassandra and um, Stargate running on top of it. Okay. so. Um, Let's go to the usage of the API. Um, so you can either use uh, Docker and everything is explained here. Uh, also, you know, uh, DataStax provide Cassandra as a service in the cloud with a free tier. Uh, no surprise, both uh, all the Stargates are available there. So I will use some uh, URL in the cloud because I'm using the, the Astra. Okay, so uh, here, this is uh, the database. I will create a key space, key space one. Okay, like uh, yeah, nothing nothing special. So uh, it will take a few uh, seconds to initialize, get the maintenance, not to do uh, stupid stuff. And I will uh, create a schema. So uh, here you do have a SQL console, uh, nothing crazy. So I will just uh, copy and paste. Uh, you do not, you, you did not come just uh, to see me uh, inserting three line on a DB on a table. So okay, this is what I'm doing. And uh, boom, I do have a first table called video, and I just insert uh, a couple of things in in this, just for just to explain a bit this REST API. So. I told you Swagger UI is uh, exposed, so this is my uh, Swagger UI. And C, to the same endpoint, we do have some uh, data API for the DML, schema for DDL, and document-oriented, and I will come back to that uh, in a minute. So for the data, uh, here you can uh, you can go and say, uh, list me the key space. So uh, it would be in the schema. Please give me, list me the key space. Here you got, you can try it out, nothing special. Uh, I do have here a token similar to what you will get if you request the authentication endpoint. And here I go, I do have my key space with the replication factor. Okay, easy. Um, you can also retrieve the table of a key space. So the key space I've created uh, is called key space one. So I can simply go there, try it out. Uh, provide again my token. My key space is called key space one, and I can list my table. So nothing, nothing really uh, special. Uh, we can keep going and uh, try to create a new table. So let's see. I will uh, create a table. Is here. I will again provide my token key space key space one, and I will provide a new uh, table called uh, users like that. Okay. So we expose the SQL. So you would expect column definition, providing the name and what what is the primary key. The, the and you re, you you find all the the, the SQL uh, concept. Okay, after all, it's it's Cassandra. You create a table. It's called user. We can here describe the tables, and it will be there. So no. Uh, no surprise, I, I do have a, 
I do new. I I do have a new table here called users. Okay, I can uh, insert a row. Uh, sure, of course. So this time, inserting a row, it's um, uh, it's a little uh, less constrained because you can go with key value, key value, key value. So now I need to go to the data part of the API, go to add a row, try it out again, again provide my uh, token. Space name is key space one. Table name, uh, I think we put the uh, video um, users for these users. We yeah, two, and here, uh, here, this is what I put. Column name, value, column name, value, column name, value. Um, and you know to be as uh, as easy as possible. And now we get our first record, and I can insert a second record. Yes. Here I go. Here is my second record. Okay, done. And then I can, of course, list all my records and uh, keep moving. Those records are paged. As of now, there is no way to do allow filtering in the API. We uh, um, embrace the good practice. So you will query by the key, as you should, and um, and get the filters uh, once needed if the index are available. Yes. OK, so um, that's for the APIs. Really, uh, as I told you, not a lot of uh, great intelligent in this first API, but still it's a good way to have your client stateless. You know, if you are, if you do have a lot of uh, instance of your microservice, and I just told you that the driver will open a connection, a TCP connection to every single node of your cluster, that can be a lot of connection open at the same time. Uh, but now it's just, you put the REST API on top of it, uh, then, Okay, now your clients are stateless and you will have less uh, open connection. That already um, um, a technical value already. So then the CAS, then the Stargate node that will get the, the, the request coming from the API uh, will act as a coordinator and will contact the three replica holding your data because it's part of the gossiping. It does have the token range. It know who know which node to contact. And it will, uh, you know, you, you can default what you like, but by default, it will be a local quorum. Okay, StraDB, uh, this is what I just used for my demo. So second APIs uh, to me is more interesting. So <laughs> waiting with JSON in Cassandra, yes, it's Possible? Yes, it is. You can do insert into using JSON. You can select JSON. So yes, you can uh, work with with a JSON in, uh, in Cassandra, and you can have you can even have nested uh, JSON. I mean JSON with multiple hierarchical level, because you find the set list map UDT, and you can um, nested all these data. But when you work like that, you really need the data set, the JSON to match your colon, uh, providing exact, I mean, <laughs> to the very least, all the fields of your key um, uh, and many more. But it's really a strong constraint. The, the schema validation is pretty, pretty strong. And also, um, if you present that to somebody who would like to just edit part of the JSON, you know, uh, most of those nested structures are frozen. So each time you need to uh, put a tombstone, update the full um, the full nested structures, and we'll uh, create all of tombstone eventually and uh, take some space where it shouldn't. So the document API's purpose is to enable uh, to use Cassandra as schemaless. Okay, I put here the JSON stata. Because this guy said there is no rule. And here is the same. Now there is no rule. Uh, you will be able to insert some any JSON as long as the JSON is well format document into Cassandra. So it can be called schemaless. Uh, it's not an accurate term because JSON itself does have a schema. Uh, I would say validationless or loose validation. You can write one single document or a batch of documents. 
and you will be able to select on every single field in your JSON, including the fields that are nested in, uh, on multiple levels inside your JSON. And it's done in a way that will limit the tombstone. So, okay, question, how do you do that? Well, um, I will show you in a demo what are the endpoints, but um, you will store documents in collections. And then uh, 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 an object that will insert will be a document. Each document will have a unique UUID. And how do you store a document in Cassandra? That's the big things, right? Okay, so each time you create a new collection, potentially having all kinds of documents, there is no validation. So you create a collection. Let's say, let's say collection video, but never mind. The table will be always the same. It's created by Stargate, maintained by Stargate. It's a dedicated schema that we handle. So you will find a key, which is your document ID. And then you will find uh, the same column text from P0 to P, uh, let's say 99, uh, you know, depending on how many level of depth you would like in your, in your JSON. And at the end, you will find the, the leaf value could be Boolean, a text or double. Okay, so, but like that, it does not seem very intuitive, yes? So let's take one JSON as a sample. Oh, here, A, B, C, level one, A and C, level two, B. Okay, so what we do here, look at that. So the key will be your document ID. Your document will be a partition. And you can retrieve all your document just providing the document ID and you will read in a single partition. So that's the first trick. One document is one partition. So you can have big JSON. You can have a pretty deep JSON. It's not a big deal because we retrieve a, a full partition. So um, I know having more than 100,000 rows uh, per partition, so wide, wide partitions or a big volume is very unlikely to happen. So the document is shredded on multiple rows. And then, so here, A, B, C, two, for first row, P0, level one was A, but we do have a level two and the attribute is B. And finally, the terminate state one. Left mood for us, second row, C, there is no level two. So the terminate value corresponds to level one. And if we read all the, the partition like that, that's at the Stargate level that we will unmarshal and marshal the object for you. So it's not a stored procedure or user-defined function or aggregation inside Cassandra. That's really Stargate, the proxy, that doing the translation for you up and down. You can also do the same with list. So here I put you now in C, you can have a list of objects. So now for the level one, you will just mention that it is an array, first item of an array, and then you can go on and provide the sub values of uh, what you need, like that TD2. Now, if you need to update part of the document, you can probably just create some uh, limited tombstone because you will only update one of the row if you change only of uh, values. And if you want to delete the document, you will do a tombstone at the, the partition level. So again, to reduce the, the, the partition. Also, it is inside a partition. And so in a partition, allow filtering is something that is less painful because you will retrieve all your data in the single partition. You won't move, you will stay there. So you can start uh, um, filtering and potentially, and you will, this is how it's implemented, you can query by any, any column. Okay, so let's do it. Let's uh, document oriented API like, uh, like a chump. Okay, so if I go to the document here, I can uh, go back and list my namespace. So you can ask the question, why is a namespace? Why? Yeah, it's the other name of the key space. But all the, 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 the vocabulary that's used in the document APIs uh, really uh, match what you find in the document-oriented uh, database. 
uh, like uh, Mongo Elastic. Um, uh, and that's for the developer not to be lost. And so again, Stargate is just a proxy with no data, but still part of the uh, gossiping, so does know the, the token range. So we'll do uh, under the hood all the SQL translations and query for you. Um, so let's see, uh, I list the namespace, I can pick one uh, JSON and I can simply create a, a, a new document, let's say. So uh, create a new document. Uh, so let's see, create a new document. Uh, this is my JSON, uh, the token, always using my token at the bottom. Uh, namespace ID, let's reuse uh, keyspace one. And a collection ID, so the collection could be a uh, doc, uh, let's say a doc video, doc video like that. And you can insert whatever you like. And you get a document ID, okay? And then with this document ID, you can retrieve all the document from the collection. You can retrieve a document by its ID uh, and many, many more. So, um, I'm looking at the clock and just uh, say, you can do all this step, create, read, update, delete on your own. This is really a step-by-step -step instruction. Um, I will come back to the flow just to get the next set of APIs. And the next APIs is GraphQL. Okay, so uh, getting a lot of traction uh, since GitHub announced that it will move to GQL. Netflix as well is a huge user of GraphQL. Uh, so it's an application programming language uh, server side uh, that prioritizes customer uh, precisely, I mean, that prioritizes giving customer precisely the, uh, the data re uh, they request. So more simply, a define all the entities and object when you do a query, exactly provide what you want as an output. And the, the idea is to have some endpoint that can cover a wide range of use case and also an endpoint that can limit the payload of the response. If you are working on mobile and front end, you know that yeah, the less uh, bandwidth you use, the better. So the GraphQL API uh, also provided out of the box uh, have two flavors. So first is called SQL first. So here you, if you look at the mutation, so in GraphQL, you have queries to select and mutation, hey, hey, us Cassandra user know very well what the mutation here is, right? So you can invoke an endpoint to create a schema. So here I create a, a table books and a table's author just by providing those two values out of the box, I will have the create, read, update, delete mutations available to me. It's had been generated and the GraphQL schema has been, has been amended with my new entities. Well, that's pretty cool. You just provide your table definitions and you get the create, read, update, delete on them just with the GraphQL. Okay. Um, Moving on, same, the demo is there. Second promise of GraphQL is to do some GraphQL federation. Um, we like to do denormalization, we don't like joins, but you know, what if it could be possible to do some kind of joins? Well, GraphQL does have something called GraphQL federations. So there is something called a gateway that will aggregate GraphQL data coming from multiple endpoints to provide to the user a unified uh, payload. Also, this GraphQL gateway, GraphQL federation is uh, uh, very well documented at Netflix uh, where they uh, created the DGS framework. So in Stargate, you can read data coming from Cassandra and make them make the aggregation with a third party data. So you may have the customer IDs in Cassandra and get all the, the historical information from the customer for something else if you want to. So this time it's called schema first. So to do the GraphQL federation, you really need now to enter some GraphQL types. So this is what you see here in yellow, book address query mutation. 
but still it's still Cassandra under the hood. So we annotate those entities to explain to GraphQL, hey, this entity should be stored in that way. And this is why you see some standard, uh, some annotations that part of the standard, but extension for Cassandra, SQL input, SQL colon, SQL index. Okay. And then as soon as you do have your schema, you can deploy it and start working with it. So fetch and create some dedicated queries contains in. So pretty cool. Okay. So we have covered the three APIs, just a little bit more on now the tooling around those APIs. So uh, first, so data stacks created Stargate as open source gateway, but not only we try to push as much as we can to ease the usage of Cassandra in Kubernetes. So that start with the CAS operator. But on top of it, now we really have this uh, framework called Kate Sandra, again, open source, katesandra.io, that provide you uh, some Helm chart to have Reaper, Medusa, the metrics collector, uh, the operator, and also Stargate available. Um, by the way, we, we reached out the limit of a Helm chart and we created now a Kate Sandra operator, really to have full control of the, the, the pod that we do have here. Still, here, Stargate is now a part of Kate Sandra with the uh, Kubernetes services and all the pod and scale out uh, handled by the, the, the Kate Sandra stack. So pretty cool to mention, now Stargate is part of that. Second is A. If you look the Swarga UI plus the GraphQL playground, you realize that there are a lot of endpoints and function there. So if you need you to create the wrapper for every single one, it will take forever. And this is why on top of Stargate, uh, we uh, created open source some SDK, Software Development Kit, as wrappers for you to, do as yet, to use the APIs. So uh, what does it look like? If you go to the Java one, and here is the link. Again, the slides are also in the uh, GitHub URL I just shared with you in the beginning. So you will set up the client to be a Stargate client. Okay, you provide the compact point, the URL for authentication, REST and GraphQL, user password, and then you set, you can say, hey, uh, from the client, I would like to use the uh, document API. I will use the collection person. I would like to retrieve the documents uh, providing the ID. And I, will to, I would like to load an object uh, which the sub properties address and the marshalling to object is done for you. You can do, uh, you can implement the search. So uh, there are also some where clause in the document API. So uh, greater, uh, smaller than, and the syntax of the where clause again uh, is borrowed to a document oriented use case for them to feel confident about that. Um, but you can, so the results are paged same as Cassandra result are page on the HTTP APIs. Okay, so you might ask, okay, what's next with these Stargates? It's a good start, <laughs> uh, worth to try, what's next? So first in the APIs, API model is really open. So the gRPC endpoint is really 90% done. It will be GA net next month. Uh, so now you will have a way to focus on performance and go the, serialize, the binary serialization in protobuf. What is cool as well is if you expose a gRPC endpoint, um, that's easy to create the stub and the clients. And not only in Python, JavaScript, and Java this time, but you know, uh, go on any, uh, any famous language. The generation from uh, protofile to stub available in multiple languages. So that would be a real clever way to have any language, have an easy way to interact with Cassandra without having a driver. Uh, relational API, so yeah, we try to we try to expose the, uh, SQL. Dynamo API, so last year we released again as an open source, hey, if what if you would like to uh, move your Dynamo workload to Cassandra? Hey, this is the Dynamo compliant API so that you can be part of your app. And now you will start reading and writing for Cassandra. Just saying, that's pretty cool. And for the architecture, as of now, uh, you see it's a token that you need to uh, create and uh, refresh with the endpoint. There you do have a TTL. 
uh, but that will be uh, redesigned. So maybe moving out of the OSGI and be able to uh, import the keys doing some SSO. The two <laughs> last but not least really, uh, Vero downtime uh, migration tools. So it's a proxy on top of your Cassandra. So you can totally set up that guy to duplicate your rights in multiple cluster eventually. And as soon as this guy is in place, you can do some uh, import from one uh, cluster to another, right? Um, and then um, you can do the uh, uh, migration without any downtime because you put those Stargate SPIs on top of it. Uh, CDC, also a big topic and hot topic in, uh, in at data stacks right now, uh, release uh, pretty soon as well. It's not easy to do CDC with Cassandra. When do we release the event? Uh, you know, as soon as one replica, we get the data, potentially you will get three notifications. So which one do you pick? Um, and how do you deduplicate the notification for somebody who would like to consume uh, the, the Cassandra CDC. So that's coming. It's a bit out of Stargate, but it will be integrated in Stargate. Stargate uh, getting kind of the coordinator role and sending back the events, uh, only the events needed. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's ongoing and available pretty soon. Okay, and I'm just on time. So I see <laughs> questions. So great. So I see. Let me let me go back. Yeah, I see that Joy <laughs> Lynch. Okay, okay, Dinesh. Oh yeah. Okay, well, that 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 that's a chat. Uh, pretty hard to get your question. Okay, so yeah, from Bowen, that's pretty like uh, Cassandra join ring false. Yeah, that's the same ID. Uh, I think it was presented uh, by um, Instagram at ApacheCon a couple of years ago to limit especially the number of connection open at their front end. So yes, it's uh, the same logic for the, for the persistent. Oh, I wonder what workload will become CPU or RAM, but me too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, Joey just shows some tons of formula just to, 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 to express uh, how to do capability uh, planning based on your use case. Here, yeah, that's another brick to incorporate eventually. Okay. Okay. Yes, and design is on storage and giant calculating so slow on storage. Yes. Can be. Uh, okay, it, even if Java 11 is pretty bad, um, you know, we, you know, the, the benchmark we did is, you know, pretty promising for the latency tail on the no, no post GC. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, is it possible to combine Stargate with Cassandra node? So I have a fully generic cluster, uh, two separate process running uh, data. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, really, the way Target has been has been built, uh, I think we probably remove the part just to do the, the storage, if not needed to have the process uh, small. It's not 100% a Cassandra node. Um, even I, you know, I, <clears throat> I even ask lately to the to the team, hey, what if you know, you are using the SQL interface of your Stargate node to just get the scalable <clears throat> compute from it. And let's say now um, you the, the the Stargate node fail. Would you fall back to your real data node because they are there and you know getting waiting waiting to to work? 
Uh, also, you can do some cross DC uh, failover at the driver level if you want to. If you get some uh, no node available part of the stargate, you can you can do the fallback. Uh, but you know, I always be told, no, 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 you really should split the Cassandra part and the stargate part. Okay, can we bring our own RPC layer to Stargate if we want to have a gRPC gateway? So uh, the code is totally open source. And on top of this persistent service, you will have multiple modules to, uh, expose, to expose an interface. So gRPC is coming, but you could fork and totally include your own gRPC for sure. Yeah, it's open. Uh, and to be honest, that's really meaning to be a, a community tool. So any pull request would be, you know, would be uh, accepted would be would be for school uh, yeah study um, the idea is really to expose as many interfaces as possible so it's not like uh, some settings to 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 define the osgi uh, runtime is set up through property, property files inside the stargate so you will have to fork and change the code but yeah i netflix i'm pretty sure that it's not a big deal Okay, how does Stargate increase compute power? I put another partner into the communication channel. I could uh, speed up the uh, query time. I would say speed up the query time because now you it's uh, you add some latencies because you need to go to Stargate and then go to the to the um, to your node and back. Uh, but you know you will um, increase the number of simultaneous requests that you can do. Um, simply put. But yeah, at, at the query time, you yeah, definitely will lose some, you know, the latency will, will be uh, worse at the cost of, you know, stateless. Yeah, the, the, the authentication in Playtex was just an example, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, if you run that in, in into uh, the Docker image, the Stargate Docker image, you can invoke these endpoints uh, in plain text. Yeah, great question. You know, please have a look and uh, provide feedback. It's just the beginning and uh, we would be happy to, to improve that uh, in uh, the best direction possible. And, you know, the team at Dastax is now uh, get uh, wider and wider to, to, to work on it, but really in the open source way. Everything is on GitHub slash target target. You, you, you should check. Okay. Well, um, okay. So uh, thank you for the time and uh, for those who already did a talk uh, today. So thank you. I was there watching uh, super high quality. Uh, really, really this new CP coming uh, for, for Cassandra really uh, promising. I think it's yeah, it will be a great year for us. Thank you very much.